Ahoy Rovers! Well, I have a very interesting episode planned here. It's uh, Down Tools, and then we're going to hop in the car, and we're going to check out Bill England's boat shed, inside of which he is building a 48-foot boat. Possibly one of the largest undertakings I've seen a boat builder do all by themselves. Anyway, let's hop in the Jeep and head over there. Three years ago, I refitted a 40-year-old Contessa 26 and took her on an amazing 7,800 nautical mile ocean voyage. We crossed the Atlantic twice, but a knockdown on the second crossing and COVID-19 put an end to my solo circumnavigation. So now, I'm building a new boat, smaller, lighter, but more suited for a solo circumnavigation. The Wave Rover 650. Ahoy, Bill! Alan, how you doing? Welcome to the Sea Clap Boat Shed. Well, hello, Rovers. Today's a special day. We're on a field trip. We're here at Bill England's Boat Shed. Very interesting boat shed in itself. Bill, what are you building here? I'm building a 48-foot George Bueller designed wooden motor sailor. Well, I think we've got a lot to see here. We're going to get around the whole boat shed and have Bill explain some of the interesting things he's doing. Let's crack on with that. So Bill, how big is this boat shed? It's 24 by 56 feet. 24 by 56, and you've built it out of one by twos yep. with little spacer blocks. Very, very interesting. How long did it take you to build this? All told, from start to having the plastic on, it was probably just over a year at a fairly slow pace. But if you had to do it again, how quickly could you do it? Uh, definitely shorten that down to six months, I think, at least. Uh, the time consuming is, is laminating all these Gothic uh, style arches um, that need to, of course, I have a jig that I built them on and one at a time and there's uh, 23 pairs so that took take some time when you got to wait for the glue to laminate up so i've I'll, I'll be putting a link to uh bill's channel he has a youtube channel and i'll put a link to that in the video description and there you can go and see bill uh he has a number of videos about the building of this shed which i think from a rover's perspective if you were thinking of building a wave rover and you're a little bit worried about do I have enough space? A smaller version of these, 24 by 32, would give you all the room you need, and then some, uh, and it wouldn't take very long to build, and it would give you all the protection you need. Anyway, let's, let's move on now to some of the stuff Bill has been doing. We're looking at the blueprints here, the building construction diagrams for Bill's boat. Uh, Bill, why don't you tell us a little bit about what you're working on? What page are you on right now? Well, right now I'm uh, working on the keel. So these, uh, it's a laminated keel, um, nine inches in width. And so I'm laminating it up from one and a half by nine inch uh, juniper or larch. Called, they call it juniper here on the island. Why, why do they have two names? Well, uh, Juniper, Larch, Hackamatak, uh, Tamarack. There's seems to be the tree species that has the most names. 
very confusing. Let's take a look at this keel. So Bill, can you explain to us what are all these big pieces of timber? What, what are they? How do they go together? All right, so this is the keel assembly and it's uh, made by laminating up uh, the one and a half by nine timbers that I've milled down. And um, you build it in sub-assemblies and uh, you build it in sub-assemblies and then essentially put it together like Lego just without the, the clicking uh, action. And so this is the ballast keel. This will actually extend below the, this will actually stem, extend below the uh, frames into the water line. I'm about 70% done the ballast keel. And then the next uh, piece here, this is a piece of dead wood that will actually uh, include the bottom half of the shaft alley. And once I have the ballast keel completed, then this gets lifted and laminated on top. And then the other smaller uh, piece here, which is only three uh, timbers uh, thick, is the upper part of the uh, shaft alley, which will be uh, laminated on, on top. So Bill, what kind of glue, because I know that's, that's a question I get a lot, what kind of glue are you using in this whole setup? Well, what I'm using is a uh, uh, what I'm using is an approved marine adhesive. Uh, it's a resorcinol based adhesive. Um, this specifically, this specific brand is called Casco Fan. It's kind of hard to find, um, especially with some of the supply issues we're having in the, these days. But it's uh, Apparently approved by Lloyd's of London, the, the major maritime insurance company, for, for use in this exact uh, application. Very good. Okay, well, what do you say? We'll, uh, we'll go on now to the frames and explain to us uh, what's happening there. Sure. Nice little bit here of white oak. Terrific. Some of the juniper that's been milled but hasn't hasn't been used yet. You can see it's actually a beautiful wood. And as Bill said, it's quite rot resistant. It's very similar to larch. Now Bill is standing in front of just some of his frames. Bill, how many frames do you actually have? There's 23 sets of frames. 23. So that's all pretty much every two feet. Every there's two feet, yeah. a frame, yes. Yeah, so these, uh, these look beautiful. You know, nice, big, heavy timbers. And then this is the way George Bueller wants it done. He wants plywood gussets that are actually bolted on with carriage bolts and they're just hot dipped, galvanized. And that's all that you really need to do. I mean, these boats, how long do you think these boats will last in a maritime environment? I believe George's first version of this boat uh, which he built, I don't know, 20, 30 years ago. It's still around. Yeah. So, like any boat, the better the maintenance, the longer she'll last. I mean, the thing that really appeals to me about this whole type of construction is the work boat sort of approved way of doing things. You know, we build work boats a certain way like this, and they last a long time. They're strong, and they get the job done. It's a terrific design really i really like the shape um you know i'm <laughs> i'm a sailor through and through so i don't really contemplate power boats but this is not exactly a power boat per se it's a motor sailor so how big is the sail on this boat Ooh, good question <laughs> that's too far down the road yeah i don't have the i can't remember the exact size there's a number of different sail configurations uh, you can put on it, but essentially it has two pur purposes, the sails. Uh, one is if you're going uh, with the wind, you can get an extra knot or two by hoisting the sails, or God forbid the uh, your diesel uh, clunks out and you got to limp home, and well, or limp whichever the direction the wind's going. Yeah, most likely a downwind passage, I, I should think. <laughs> 
So what do you what do you have right there, Bill? Uh, this is my planer. In the UK, they like to call it a thicknesser. Um, got it off uh, Facebook Marketplace, where I've got uh, most of my uh, milling tools from. And you know that's a nice piece of kit. That's yes. a nice old one, and it's nice and heavy. Absolutely. This is yes. so much superior to that modern plastic junk you see in most stores these days that they're passing off. Uh, this that's a nice piece of kit. And then you've got your table saw. Which tool do you find you're using the most here? Uh, probably the the planer here. Um, just because usually I, I'm able to get uh, the smooth surface on the jointer, get it down to the nine inches width uh, on the table saw, and then down to the inch and a half from what's two inch rough stock. Right on. Okay, so what are we working on right here, Bill? Uh, this is a modified scarfing jig that I'm going to be using to shape the end of the um, keel timbers where they meet the angled forefoot. It looks very well thought out, this scarfing jig. Where'd, where'd you get the idea on this? Yes, this guy on uh, YouTube, um, his channel's called uh, Sailing Wave Rover. Do you know him? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's, he's done a bit of scarfing. <laughs> Very cool. So Bill, how long have you been working on this project to date? I'm about 11 months into it so far. 11 months. So that's not a long time by boat building standards at all. How long do you think it'll take before you can put this boat in the water? My plan is to be able to splash it uh, in about three years and then um, Probably spend another year, 18 months doing the final outfitting uh, before I set sail for Points Unknown. Where would Points Unknown take a fella, do you think? That's the beauty of sailing. You can go anywhere there's water. Yeah, sounds good. Sounds very good. Well, Rovers, that completes the tour the field trip to Bill's boat shed. Very interesting boat shed it was, too. Uh, Bill, are you keeping a record of the build? Absolutely. I'm uh, taking videos and publishing weekly, bi-weekly, on my YouTube channel, The Ambler Odysseys. Ambler Odysseys. And like I said, I'll put a link to that in the video description. And I think Bill is trying to say he's going to put a video out every week. No pressure, Bill. Hard to keep up to you, Alan. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, next time, next time you see me, it'll be back in the Wave Rover room, womb, the womb with a view, and I will be putting the fiberglass on the hull. A lot to do, time to crack on. <laughs> <laughs> now I'd like to take a moment to honor three new names to our benefactors bulkhead. Jolie Morgan, Michael Hamway, and Frank Ledee. So what is a benefactor? Well, these folks have made a contribution of $100 US or more to the project, and their names will be affixed to a bulkhead inside Wave Rover and will be traveling with me on our circumnavigation. Now these donations truly are much appreciated. Well, in the next video, it's back to Wave Rover headquarters where I'll be covering the Wave Rover 650 in fiberglass cloth. Now, Mr. Speckles and I would like to welcome our newest patron, Eric Lang. Now, if you'd like to know more about Wave Rover's patron page and benefactors bulkhead, I have links to both those pages in the video description. Now another way to help Wave Rover, and it doesn't cost you a dime, is by sharing our content on your social media. So now, as always, Rovers, thanks for watching. Give us one more. Brilliant.